<laughs> big, right, Chip? It's definitely a big factor without a doubt. Grant, of course, did just make top eight at the Orlando Regional Championships with this same deck. He's changed up the list just a little bit. A few of the tech cards have left that he had previously. There's no more leafy camo poncho, no more Boo. big charm. A little bit more consistent, though. Still, of course, like you mentioned, rocking that Aerodactyl. Yep, I think that this means that maybe he's got a, a couple more pieces to find the right cards at the right time. Maybe you get that Aerodactyl out a little bit sooner. Obviously, turn two is uh, when you'd like <laughs> to be using that. Grant with a lost vacuum in the prize. Is that something that could be relevant in this matchup as he would like to have access to it in order to get rid of a potential big parasol so that he can use Evil Tall at the right time? There's definitely a lot at stake here. Um, one other thing as well, Grant is not playing something like the Canceling Cologne. It's something we've seen from time to time in these Lugia decks to counteract things like the Aerodactyl. Well, we are underway here, and it's going to be Grant Manley starting things off. So Ooh. exactly what you want to see when your opponent plays a 1-1 Aerodactyl, right? Starts off with that Evolution Incense, able to search out any Evolution Pokemon that he wants. Obviously, Aerodactyl seems like a, or Aerodactyl, excuse me, Archaeops, a different fossil bird over on the other side of the table. Gets me every time. Yep, yeah, we'll fetch that out of the deck. Did also start that Orangaroo with Primate Wisdom, a great way to try to play around Marnie. But Grant, uh, I think recognizing uh, Grant Hayes, I should say, recognizing how popular Guru is in these decks is actually choosing to play Judge as his disruption option, as many of these Movie Max decks have become accustomed to. Yeah, give us a, give us a second. There's a lot of different uh, conflicting Pokemon <laughs> and names going yes, on here players. as we get set up for this match. And yeah, I think this is maybe the, uh, the only deck in the format where you use Evolution Incense on the first turn, and it might not be a bad thing. There's, right. of course, ways to get that into the discard pile by way of that Aurora Energy, perhaps. And we are going to see Grant going to switch out a double turbo for a research. I guess that's a pretty good trade. Looking for a way to get a Lugia V, which I don't think he has in his hand. It was just that Evolution Incense, the only searching card. He is holding on to Aurora Energy, uh, uh, though, and that Evil Tall, and will put both of those into play in order to put an Archaeops into the discard pile. But no Lugia V on turn one. That is not ideal. Yeah, I don't think this is optimal Lugia, is it, then? <laughs> <laughs> not at this point. Grant Hayes may see this as an opportunity. Usually when you go second in this matchup, you don't really care about Aerodactyl too much. But when your opponent didn't get a Lugia V down, is that the route you want to go? Yeah, it's it's tricky because now you see a scenario where you could easily just go after the prizes, but it's not like you're staring down V Pokemon on the other side. They're just single prize Pokemon. So I think you have plenty of time. I still want to go for my Aerodactyl here, get that locked in, and I know there's no threats waiting for me. Of course, that Ancient Star, V Star power, when you use it, it the Aerodactyl gains an ability that now all of your opponent's Pokemon V in play have no abilities. So that for this matchup specifically, we'll turn off that Summoning Star V-Star power on the Lugia V-Star. Grant will start by grabbing a Mew. Of course, I think wants to value getting out his basic Fusion Strike Pokemon initially. We'll see if Aerodactyl makes its way into play at some point this turn. Yeah, usually you want to get all of these Fusion Strike Pokemon down first, draw all, of all those cards, and if you do find it, then you're going to be fine. And clearly, since your opponent didn't even find a Lugia, yes. if you miss, it's not the end of the world. Lost City hitting the discard pile as well. That's a card that you want to play in this deck because you want to be able to get rid of Drapions more than anything. It's also really solid in the Reggie Gigas matchup. But it honestly is not really strong in this matchup because you want to use Echoing Horn to bring back your opponent's Lugia Vs. You don't want them to be in the Lost Zone, actually. <laughs> yeah, and there's really no way to bring Pokemon back for your opponent. So once they're gone, they're usually gone anyways. The discard pile basically acts as the Lost Zone. I actually think Grant is a little bricked out here. I think he's got a Aerodactyl V-Star and a Mew V-Max in the hand. Just retreating into Mew V and passing uh -oh. to Grant. Grant passing over to Grant. Now Grant has a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Grant. Uh, well, his decision might already be made for him as we see the lost vacuum sitting there, and there's only one left as the other one's in the prizes. So I guess you, the only decision is do you want to use a Rangaroo and put it on top or just just throw it all away. Just ditching it. And Not even going to put it back on the top with the with the wisdom, though. Yeah, I wonder if Grant didn't check for the lost vacuum. Uh, that's definitely something that could... Uh, you might not really think about checking it right away. And maybe he just wants to value his setup a little bit more initially anyway. 
does have a Lugia V now off of the research, has Quick Ball to find another, and maybe wanted to save the Guru to prep maybe the Lugia V star on top. It's actually going to be a boss going on top for now. Well, we see Quick Ball held in the hand, so that is the Pumpkaboo way to get out of a path lock if you want to hold that. Debating it, as uh, but that is, I mean, that's basically going to be the only way that you come back from that. Uh, yeah, but the issue is, is if you hold on to Quick Ball, wait for Pumpkaboo, and your opponent just boss KOs your Lugia V. <laughs> oh, come on. He's got one Mew, two Genesex, and two cards in hand. I mean, he hand. just wrote him phoned. Yeah, I mean, you, you are, <laughs> if, if you don't think. Who's he calling? If you don't think that Grant Hayes could pop off with a boss KO on Lugia V, you are not respecting this Mew Max deck enough. All right. Yep. Yeah, put me on the disrespect train. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing it right now. We saw two power tablets down also, but Grant is, Grant Manley is going to respect it, go for the second Lugia V, and this does make him a little more susceptible oh. to the path to the peak. He also does have another quick ball in hand, so oh, good card, that makes it yeah. <laughs> make a bit more sense, totally I Totally fine. Okay, hold up. Grant, Grant Hayes, Hayes actually has, well, uh, he didn't draw the best off of there, but <laughs> <laughs> to, get, to get that down was pretty good. Had a decent hand drawing, just one card off this Genesect, and it's the Aerodactyl. Grant does not have an energy, no supporter card, and not even a path to the peak to try to slow down Grant Manley. It's going to be a bench of the Aerodactyl, and I think a retreat pass incoming. You changing your tone <laughs> over there? <laughs> well, it didn't work out in this instance. <laughs> but there's so many cards Grant could have, Grant uh, Hayes could have yeah. drawn to get him there. Well, he, he didn't call the right friend with the, with the Rotom <laughs> phone there. We'll see if Grant Manley is able to come up with the right answer, as finally Lugia V-Star should be available Evolution Incense for, I believe, the second Archaeops now is lined up, and with yes. that Quick Ball, we'll be able to get that into the discard pile. Yep, and has that V-Star in hand. No supporter, though, and honestly does not have a great way to get this Guru out of the active spot. He could have attached Double Turbo Energy last turn to it before he researched, but I think the reason he did that is because he wanted to keep Capture Energy as an out to get Lugia V into play. So it was probably the correct decision to lose the double turbo, but in this spot, it might mean that he is going to be short in attack. And we'll see what three energy attack he might be able to line up. It certainly gets a little trickier from this stage, but maybe Ranguru can help out. It's powerful. Not going to help too much in this spot. Now, Quick Ball could find the Luminion in order to get the supporter for turn. Could find something like a Marnie, potentially. It looks like Grant's going to debate what he wants to go for first, though. Maybe we'll see that summoning star. Sure enough, flip of the V-Star marker. Two Archaeops coming into play. Could get back done sparse if he wanted to, but it is going to be those two Archaeops. And now Primal Turbo is online. There are some matchups where he says that's actually correct, right? And we've, we've seen that sometimes. But no, I think getting energies down is usually going to be pretty solid here. Yeah, definitely the way <laughs> you want to go. Primal Turbo. Flipping through the deck now can grab two special energy and attach them to one of his Pokemon. Grant does have another double turbo, so that can help him maybe get there on an attack this turn. Uh, would maybe need to accelerate that to the active to even retreat, potentially. No, I, I don't think there's actually... Uh, is there? I don't think there's a way. I'm trying to think of how it, it yeah. works out. Maybe he could have attacked with the Luminion, but his bench is full at this point, so... I mean, I guess he could go for Read the Wind if he wanted to, but <laughs> just passing with the Guru active seems better than that. Yeah, I, maybe you can set up enough damage for uh, a Raikou at some point to take the knockout on the Aerodactyl V, and you just set up some chip damage. Uh, it's, it's not pretty. No, uh, and you cannot split the energies here, which is what makes this a little awkward. If Grant could go put an energy on the active... Oh, no, he can't attack. He has an attached for turn, right? And he drew a powerful energy, so he'll be able oh, to retreat the these capture. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll be able to retreat this Guru. Yep, did draw that powerful off of the Oranguru. Now we'll be able to retreat into Lugia and will take the knockout and does find the V-Guard energy, which is really key in this matchup. Yeah, it's great to have that additional way to prevent your opponent from taking the knockout. We already saw two power tablets gone, and maybe actually three uh, trying to draw last turn. So Lugia V-Star should be sticking around for quite a while. Grant does find that for Seal Stone to help out potentially, but this hand is going nowhere. Yeah, it's really tough. He's got Lost Vacuum in hand, but the only card he could get rid of from play is the Forest Seal Stone, and he doesn't want to do that until he has used it. So he may just have to start this turn off by using that Star Alchemy V-Star power. 
It does not feel great. This is not a deck that plays Professor's Research or anything, too, so you're not going to be able to just go find that supporter that makes everything nice again. Uh, you could go for a card like Judge, and then you're working with just four cards, and you're hoping to chain together those Fusion Strike systems, but it does not feel good here. Looks like Ultra Ball might be the target just to get another Genesect. Does have cards in hand that he doesn't mind discarding. That Aerodactyl V-Star being definitely one of them. Yeah, this is a card that you would have looked for from the Judge, so to just grab it itself and draw into four cards is... Yeah. It's like Judge without judging. Now you try to draw the Judge, right, off yeah. of this. Grant Manley did only take a two-prize KO, so will not be open to something like a Roxanne, potentially. Something else to note as well, Grant Manley now has used both of his double turbo, one in the discard pile, one on the active, so that makes it a little bit more difficult to get to the amazing destruction of Evil Tall. Yeah, that's a great point. Also, retreating can be tricky, too, yeah. using that Luminion at times. So we'll see if it gets to that stage. As we're going to learn a lot about Grant Hayes and the strategy coming up here. Is The knockout's not available at, no. at any point. Yeah, it cannot season. happen thanks to the V-Guard and thanks to those tablets that have already been utilized, right? Yep. Cannot quite get there. Lugia effectively having 310 hit points. Mew currently doing 190. If you play four damage modifiers, you can get there. But all Grant Hayes has left is one belt and two power tablets. That's three. That's enough to put you to 280. But, of course, V-Guard shuts that down. I think he only has one tablet because he had to throw away another one. Oh, did one. he throw another one? Yeah, trying Jeez. to draw cards. So it's, it's very, very low. And there's, of course, Judge being played here, so no Silene options open. I do think Grant plays the Silene. Yeah, Grant Hayes does have the Silene in the deck, something that it seems like people have been cutting from their Mew lists. Grant did choose to, to pack it for this weekend, though. Well, you get double tails with it enough, you just <laughs> don't trust it anymore. It's more, I think, of a decision of how big do you think control will be. That's a card that's super important in that matchup. Sure. And this, it did seem like coming into this tournament that control could have been okay for this current meta. So Grant may be wanting to respect that and just have that option to get back those power tablets at the right time. Well, respecting the right cards is the name of the game. It does find that big parasol, yeah. which will be nice here, as you can play that onto the Mu VMAX and not have to worry about the amazing destruction potential uh, from Grant Manley. And when you also see that powerful energy along with the double turbo on the other side from your opponent, you usually don't think that the Lugia will find the knockout. Another Mu VMAX now coming into play off of the Ultra Ball, just thinning the hand down a little bit more. We do have one more Fusion Strike system incoming. So you're not going to be able to get a knockout this turn. Is there anything else Grant is hoping to draw here at this point off of this last Genesect? Uh, trying to, to find it. I don't know if there's much else. You, obviously, you can get a Stadium in play, but they don't really help you in this situation either. Your opponent's not going to be using any of those uh, V-Box, or v, the Rule Box abilities sure, or sure. anything. So. Does find the Rotom Phone to prep something on the top. That can be nice for Amarni. Of course, Grant Manley does play a couple copies of that card. Pretty standard in the Lugia decks. Like you mentioned, though, does find the big Parasol. So that'll cut off the easiest path to get a knockout this turn through that Evil Tall. And it will just be the Cross Fusion Strike Techno Blast being utilized. 190 damage dealt. Uh, actually, even less now, <laughs> thanks to that V-Guard energy. 160. Yep, still lines up for a two-hit knockout, but... That's not really what Grant Hayes is looking for here. But you got to keep playing the game, though. That's exactly uh, what you're here to do. You have the Parasol, so you don't worry about getting immediately return KO'd here in this spot. But it's up to Grant to find it. So I don't even know what he, what he can go for at this stage, though the hand isn't going anywhere. Yeah, there is a world where he could have loaded up this active Lugia V-Star with a bunch of powerful energies, the rest of his powerful energies, and a choice belt, right, right. in order to get a knockout on to this Mew VMAX. But doesn't have that available as there is no choice belt in the hand and no supporter even. I was looking for some help there off the Guru and did not find it. Yep. Likes the powerful energy on the benched Lugia V-Star, so... There's always that option to potentially retreat with that double turbo and uh, work in a different Pokemon to start attacking this Mew VMAX. Yeah, I think Grant Manley here is debating what is more valuable. Do I want to try to protect this Lugia V-Star and attack with a clean one, or do I want to set up two Pokemon to potentially be able to attack? Because that's something he could do here. Use these two Primal Turbos, set up some energy onto the bench Lugia V-Star, and also set up energies onto the Evil Tall. And I think we are going to go that route, set up these energies onto both Pokemon, and just attack with this active. Even though it's damaged, even though you know it's going down, you're going to go down to just two prizes left. 
Yep, as long as you're dealing enough damage to eventually work in a Pokemon like that Luminion Ooh. to take a knockout, I feel like yeah. you feel pretty comfortable. And He uh, actually chose to uh, fail that second Primal Turbo and just attack. Well, if you don't think your opponent's going to be bossing an Archeops anytime <laughs> soon, I guess I guess you can feel comfortable with that, too. We did see two capture energies down early and also uh, the use of the two double turbos. So all the energies that you like to use for retreating purposes are basically gone. Every energy is going to be very crucial as far as getting the right attacks off from here. So Grant Hayes did prep the switch on top of the deck. That means he will be able to reset the fact that his Mew Max currently cannot attack. He does hit a heads on a Cramomatic, now able to find any card out of his deck that he so chooses. A couple of double turbo being brought to the front immediately, wanting to try and attack with a clean Mew VMAX. Is there ever a world where he could go for some sort of crazy psychic leap play here, or is it just too out of reach yeah. with, uh, with the, the tablets being down? I think the V-Guard takes it out of contention, but I... I Even with, like, a boss's orders on something like Evil Tall, right? Like that, it, so that might be the, the play, then, if you... if you re But even then, with with all the tablets down, you're not yeah. going to be able to reach those numbers. It would have to be boss plus two tablets, right? And I, I, we don't think he has that. Yep. Yeah, three tablets right there in the discard pile. Just has one remaining. Grant Hayes really kind of analyzing the board, thinking through this position, trying to determine what his best route is. How does he win this game? Well, of course, reset the Techno Blast is going to help out here. Has that double turbo energy. Has a boss's orders. I don't... I mean, do you? is this a time to target an Archeops, potentially? Or are we just taking the knockout on Lugia? Well, this is a dangerous turn regardless. If this Mew VMAX does stay in the active spot, then you know that you're at risk of the, the Evil Tall taking a big mm -hmm. knockout here. So if you were going to use a boss... It makes a lot of sense to go after the Archeops. The problem is that Grant already got an energy down onto the... Uh, well, actually, it doesn't matter yeah, that he got two, it because two, two double, double turbos, turbos are gone. gone. Yes. So he's actually going to be... That would actually be a pretty strong strat. Yeah, go after the Archeops here. It does put those prizes onto the bench, and then Grant wouldn't... Grant Manley wouldn't have to attack with this damaged Lugia again the rest of the game. So that is a bit of a risk there. Maybe Grant Hayes is thinking, if I don't take these prizes now, I may never get another chance. With so many gusts, though, does have uh, Palpat even in the hand, potentially. He's thinking through it, though. I don't think you want to judge Grant Manley here because Grant actually... Oh, Grant, yeah, uh, that's, okay. That's another play that you could do. <laughs> is, uh, oh, you're just going to knock me out, and then I'm going to be left with this giant Mew VMAX with, a, with so much damage on it. Yeah, so Grant Hayes looked at that board, thought about it for a few minutes, played out that turn, but really just felt like his draws were not going to get him there. Didn't think he had a chance to win this one. So Grant Manley goes up one game to zero here in round number six. Well, if you told a Grant Manley that he wasn't going to get a Lugia on the opening turn and he'd still find a way to win, I think he'd say that's pretty optimal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant, uh, yeah, I'm sure he was pretty disappointed there off that Guru. Didn't find the out to the V, but still found a way to close it out. Grant Hayes was in a potentially really strong position considering how poor Grant Manley's turn one was, but he just did not find enough on his first turn. He used a couple Fusion Strike systems, but they were kind of weak ones, only for two cards, only for one card even. Couldn't find a Battle VIP pass, and you can just see how scrappy the games get with Mew VMAX when you don't get that early VIP pass to set your board up. And let's also talk about how clutch the Oranguru was on that next turn as it was able to find the powerful energy, which was the exact way to take the knockout there for the, the Lugia, and it lined up perfectly. There wasn't going to be a knockout if it wasn't for that powerful. Going into this next game, do you think Grant Hayes has any adjustments really to make, or was it a situation of the cards just not falling in the right order? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be the latter there. As, uh, he had everything that he wanted. Had the, the Mew, the double Genesect, and was ready to roll. Just was looking to find a battle VIP pass. Never showed up, and then it was absolutely terrible. But then looking here, double turbo, powerful down, double power tablet on Ooh. the other side for Grant. Yeah, kind of awkward prizes for both of these players. A path to the peak as well in Grant Hayes' prizes. A little Ooh. bit awkward for both of these guys. Ultra Ball's going to immediately throw away the vacuum and the tablet, too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is going to be rough news. You have one, one tablet. more tablet. Now, Grant Hayes is going first in this game. So with that one tablet and also with a choice belt, he's going to try to take two prizes on the next turn, going after a Lugia V. And Grant Manley's definitely going to have to respect that play, trying to get down another Lugia V, I imagine, over on his end. Or 
ignore Pokemon, just go for an Aerodactyl, and you win anyways. <laughs> you, you don't have to attack if you use the Aerodactyl this Beastar. This is true, this is true. <laughs> but the risk here, of course, is going to be not finding enough cards to get set up. Sure, you get that Aerodactyl in play, but if you give your opponent enough time to just manually load up a Lugia, if you're not doing enough to follow it up, the Aerodactyl alone is not going to win you the game, that is for sure. Yeah, you need your leafy camo poncho <laughs> so you can go and hide again. But I think this is pretty good. He's yep. got the, the double turbo already down on the Aerodactyl. Just need to make sure you draw Ooh. three cards. And wow, those are pretty solid. At least you got the, the Forest Seal Stone to guarantee the V-Star next turn. Yeah, it's an interesting spot. Do you use the Forest Seal Stone to go get two Genesect in play, draw some more cards, or do you hold off and just guarantee you get the V-Star? And it looks like Grant did choose to go for that second option in this position. I'd be very tempted to draw more cards. Oh, definitely. But you also... I think I think Mahone's 90-10 starts to come into play when you get a turn to Aerodactyl in this matchup. Absolutely. That's a, that's a number I'd stick to. <laughs> so Grant Manley has a pretty solid hand here. It's double Ultra Ball and Quick Ball, so he could get double Archeops into the discard pile right away. He also could just get one Archeops down, Ultra Ball for the second one, and then use Read the Wind this turn in order to discard that second one. That is an option that he has on the table. He's starting off now, though, with a Capture Energy. Going to take a moment to check the prizes. With three Energy being prized, it does become much more important to manage that specific resource through the rest of the game. That is something that happens to these Lugia players at the end of games. Sometimes they just find themselves an Energy or two too short. Well, it is nice to at least have this Lugia in the active spot because you're obviously, as you mentioned, the read the wind is going to be great. So continue to, to draw cards, see some additional options when you know that you're going to be limited as far as abilities go this game uh, with the Aerodactyl V star coming down. So potentially you could draw into some of those energies early on, but having some of the prize cards too is going to be tough. And we see another one down on the Ultra Ball here as we lose the Aurora. And Read the Wind is going to be Grant Manley's best option, probably for a couple of turns here, as that Aerodactyl with the energy on it is threatening the turn to Ancient Star V Star Power. For now, though, it also looks like Grant is going to hold off on using the second Ultra Ball to get the second Archeops down, just using Read the Wind most likely on this first Archeops, wanting to draw into more cards to Ultra Ball away. Yeah, we do see boss's orders here, so maybe a little bit of stall potential. Bring that Genesect V up. Hopefully your opponent doesn't have a way to switch that Pokemon, and top-decked double turbo says otherwise. <laughs> that will be an easy retreat option using that Fusion Strike system, drawing a couple cards initially. Does have that cram o -matic. Okay. If you could get Aerodactyl V-Star into play without having to use your Forest Seal Stone, that would be even better for Grant Hayes. Uh, okay, <laughs> yep, that is really strong. And we finally got to see the heads flip on the uh, the stage, on the, the the screen here. Yes, as it it's never not rolling actually, off screen this yeah, time. It yeah. never actually stays on the screen for us. So thank you, Mr. Granate, for that. <laughs> Great, excellent flip. We'll give it a 10 out of 10. Does find that Aerodactyl V-Star. V-Star power end coming. That Ancient Star will mean that Grant Manley does not have the option to go for Summoning Star as long as this Aerodactyl V-Star remains in play. And this is where things get really tough as the Lugia player. Yeah, uh, this is where we find out if Grant actually, Grant Manley, thinks that there's a way to, to come back from this position or if he only plays out a few more turns. I do love this Bird Keeper here. You get to preserve the energy on the Lugia V and start to try to charge up the one on the bench if you find the right cards. Does not find the powerful energy, however, so I think we might just see that heat fire attached to the active and try to draw into some additional resources. It does become tough, though, because if you start to put energy onto your active, then you're even farther away from attacking right. with the one on the bench. So. I guess with the one energy, you're always allowed to do this, but then the next two, yeah. you're really looking for powerful energy or bust. Yep. Back to back, powerfuls needed. And one of them, let's remember, is in the prize cards. And it does have to come with a boss's orders as well, which one has already hit the discard pile. You're making this seem like it's not going to happen, Chip. What's going on there? <laughs> it's it's looking tough, for <laughs> sure, for, for Grant Manley. So if, if he can draw into, with the next three cards, powerful, powerful boss, and then and, and we also want that to happen in a two-turn span, which doesn't seem likely, <laughs> <laughs> then you're saying there's a chance. Hey, listen, he's got a Marnie in hand, so next turn he can go Marnie, find a bunch more cards. Yeah, there, there's plenty I of like play it. here. 
Now, Grant Hayes, this is where things do get maybe a little awkward, a little questionable. Obviously, this is what you want to do in the matchup. But now he has to retreat this Aerodactyl, find another energy. He's down two, by the way, one on the active, one on the bench. And he's also got to find a way to draw some cards. With this Aerodactyl V-Star in play, you get to see less cards because it's not a Fusion Strike Pokemon. Yeah, it pretends, and often it definitely surprises the, the, the player as they will draw that additional card, thinking that they are drawing <laughs> to the, the full five or the full six, whatever it ends up being, and uh, it's not going to actually help you out in any situation there. I do like the fact that you mentioned the Silene earlier, because we get to bring up now that the fact that we're down a couple of these double turbos early, if yes. you find that in the right situation, you can draw right back into that and then use that Fusion Strike system to Ooh. find it again. So Grant Hayes found Escape Rope. That's actually, yeah, I guess that's why we saw Grant Manley go grab Dunspar. It's not a card that's good in this matchup, but plays around the Escape Rope play of Grant Hayes being able to just get off the hit. Now, this is the thing that can happen sometimes with this Aerodactyl deck. You get it set up, you're in a good spot, but now you miss an energy for a turn, and now you've got to kind of just wait. You're not drawing as many cards. This deck is far less explosive when you're only Fusion Strike systeming up to five as opposed to six. Is that the verb that we use for that? <laughs> Explosive? No, uh, fusion strike system you mean? Fusion, using fusion strike system? <laughs> fusion strike systeming? <laughs> uh, looks like Ultra Ball is going to just find a, a blank card there in that Archeops so that we can put that on the bottom of the deck there with the Marnie. And this has to be the, the best Marnie of his life. Uh, as, as we've mentioned earlier, we are looking for powerful energy immediately, and then second powerful and boss's orders to follow up. Let's see it. Five cards. Boss's orders. It does find boss. No powerful just yet, but can get one more look. Of course, has quick ball in hand, and we know how important Orangaroo has been to so many of these Lugia players. It is a big part of just seeing one additional card, and sometimes that one card is all the difference. We'll see if it can be a clutch guru for Grant here. Yep, we've already seen it pay off for Caleb earlier on, his teammates, and... Is that even going to be an Ooh. option? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe recognizing it's not super likely, and you don't want to just put a bad card on top of your deck when you know you're going to just draw into it the next turn. So forcing out the Amazing Rare Evil Tall instead. And uh, if this does give Grant Manley the option to start attaching energy cards to this Pokemon as well. Uh, it's a long shot. It, it, it does take a bit longer. I mean, hey, it's four attachments, similarly to the Lugu V-Star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that is a just strat. Just passes, though. But, just yeah. passes. If it's not powerful, why bother? Grant Hayes on the other side now. Finds one card. It's boss's orders. And that's the that's one of the ones he's really looking Drawing for. Drawing one, looking for. Uh, does not find it. Oh, yeah. Now can retreat. Oh, did find that double turbo to start off this turn, actually. And is just going to get a hit into this Lugia V-Star. And this game starts to look pretty... Pretty difficult for Grant Manley. He does have a couple bosses' orders in hand, so could try to slow the game down, stall out a little bit. Grant Hayes is down a few double turbos as far as switching cards go, but looks like Grant Manley will just pass. Maybe hope Grant Hayes does not have the switch, but starts off the turn with it. Well, I kind of like this from Grant, as he knows his opponent wants to use a switch in order to attack this turn. So if you are going to go for a stall strategy, might as well make them use a switch instead of having switch into a Mu V Max with another energy ready to go. So now you've got that gone, and you can go after the Genesex. Grant Manley has not seen the Silene from Grant right. Hayes just yet. I think if he knew for sure that Grant Hayes had Silene, he maybe would concede this game. But I think Grant Manley is going to try to find situations where he can tr uh, try to maybe stick something active and hope that Grant Hayes maybe prized a couple double turbos, prized a switching card, or just doesn't have many left. He's already down a few so far this game. That's the name of the game here. Double boss's orders. Try to buy some time. Maybe you can stick the high hit points of the Lugia V-Star active and hang on. Grant it's, Hayes immediately finds a escape rope, though. <laughs> yeah, ha, yeah, I was about to say, there's just so many ways that <laughs> Grant can get out of that situation. So it's looking really solid for Grant Hayes. Grant Manley is someone who I know does not ever like to give up. If he feels like he's got a chance in a game, he's going to try to stick it out. But this is a situation where it is just looking maybe a little too far gone. We might see a boss and try to slow things down for just one more turn, but if that doesn't work, we might be going to the next one. May, uh, this actually makes sense, though. He can hold off on using boss because Grant has to play a switching card in order to 
even attack or find another energy in order to even attack. So I guess it makes sense to, to not be going for the boss stall right away. Just hold on to that resource. Yeah, it's the, the same strategy as last turn. Just make your opponent show you the switching card or the energy. They equal the same thing in our eyes from this point as we're just looking to, to stall for time. Grant didn't choose to attach an energy last turn. He also didn't attach one this turn. Ooh. We'll just pass. And now Grant Hayes flipping for the Cramomatic does hit a Tails and discarded another Cramomatic with that as well. Oh, and didn't even have to use Technoblast last turn, by the way. Was able to use the Max Miracle. So that helps. didn't even have to play a switching card. So just knocks out the Dunsparce. Grant Manley down six prizes to three. Will Boss bring up this Genesect and hope that it's enough for him to uh, to try to stall this out, but Grant Hayes is pretty quick to slam that double turbo energy Ooh. and some power tablets as well. Yep, that is a huge knockout. Only thing left there is that Evital, and sure, you can try to stall right here, but we know that Grant Hayes is holding on to that escape rope. Yep, yep. Grant's going to go for it and just see maybe there's a chance, but we know that Grant Hayes has escape rope in hand. It's a simple draw. Play the rope, and we're going into game three. Yep. You get a little bit of extra information if you're great manly, but good news is we still got 20 minutes left on the clock for yes. both these players to give us a great game number three here. Great Manly, 5-0, and looking to improve to 6-0. and And Grant Hayes would be able to get to 16 match points with a victory, just three more away from locking in day two contention. Yeah, Grant Manley someone who just really dislikes <laughs> conceding games. It's a, <laughs> it's a hard skill to know when to scoop, and, uh, and Grant is someone who's always seeing that, like, 1% line. Playtesting right? with those people yeah. <laughs> is really difficult sometimes because you just like you just want to get like a general matchup spread, but they're just over here trying to, to prove the odds wrong. I can win this game <laughs> one out just of wait. 100. <laughs> 45 minutes later, I think I got gotcha. you. We are moving into this third game, and Grant Hayes finally got his strategy set up in that one. I mean, we saw how dominant Aerodactyl can be against Lugia V-Star. Grant Manley just did not get the cards to fall in the right order, did not find the out in order to get around that Ancient Star V-Star power. Of course, not playing that Canceling Cologne like we mentioned, something that these Lugia V-Star decks have played from time to time. It's been a little while since we've seen him in the meta, though. Choosing not to play for this event is no big surprise, and Grant Hayes, I'm sure, is thankful for that. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, going first is going to be huge. Yes. Grant Manley does have that luxury going for him. Got to have that Lugia to start things off here, but really don't need too much else on this opening turn. It's going to be really on what Grant Hayes is able to do, as we've seen. Uh, often, you can make up for the fact that you did not get to go first if you're able to lock in that path early with a judge. Yes, and that is what Grant Hayes is going to want to do on turn one, going second. Play judge and path at the same time. Make it as difficult as possible for Grant to get set up, and maybe even still go for that Aerodactyl play. Well, my poker phase isn't what it used to be. As I saw Grant Manley draw his hand, I winced. And uh, no. it's it's okay. okay. He's going to get a Lukia. Okay. But it's not going to be pretty, Chip. Not ideal. See these prize cards going out now. That's oh. Silene. Oh, and the Aerodactyl V-Star. Double vacuum and on the other double side. double vacuum. The and whole line. line. <laughs> Aerodactyl pieces. What? I mean, if you're going to lose one, I guess lose both. But it doesn't look good. Aerodactyl V-Star, double vacuum for Grant Manley. Aerodactyl V for Grant Hayes. It just got worse as long as these prizes got being, uh, as the more these prizes were being laid out, the worse it got. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Well, it is Ultra Ball. This is the one card that made up for how rough the hand is for Grant Manley. Gonna be able to find that Lugia V. But it is three energies and a bird keeper, Chip. <laughs> oh, yep. That's that's pretty tough. And as Grant Hayes, you know, whenever you're the player sitting across from a Lugia, you see an Ultra Ball, you see it doesn't discard an Archeops, and you see that they grab Lugia V. Winnie. You're kind of okay with that spot, and especially when you're playing Judge in your deck, because if you put your opponent down to just four cards on the first turn of the game, it is so much less likely that they're going to be able to find a way to get down to Archeops and get a Lugia V-Star. You throw a pass to the peak in there, it becomes nearly impossible. And you add Radiant Charizard in the mix as well. It's a high retreat cost Pokemon, a huge energy drought resource. You're going to lose five energies potentially trying to attack with this thing yes. on the opening turns. It's, it's not the Pokemon that you want to see. Of course, we know Grant has the one way to switch it, but that could be gone as early 
really as a judge this turn. And I also wonder if there's a world for Grant Hayes where he actually doesn't want to go for a judge this turn, knowing that Grant did not get down any Archaeops, knowing that he uh, was only able to get the Lugia V as his only search card. I think it would make sense to not even really care about going for judge here. It does mean that you don't have a supporter for the turn, but I also completely understand. Well, the there's other here. options, I guess, right? Well, but you don't really want to give your opponent a new hand in general. It's yeah. The other option is boss's orders, and we're, we're okay with the Radiant hey, Charizard in the active spot right now. Well, I was going to say we could see Silene, but I, re <laughs> I remember it's in the prizes. <laughs> I think everything's... The, there's like 14 cards for each player in the prize cards, the way we <laughs> saw it. It looks ridiculous. It's less than ideal, without a doubt. There is a Cramomatic here in this hand, and also the Forest Sealstone, so... Curious to see if this cram hits a head. It's a big flip. Yeah, would love to find the VIP pass, wow. and it is going to be a heads roll. Uh, that is very nice to see. Have to get those Pokemon down. And <laughs> I mean, I guess you get the news that you don't have the Aerodactyl. Usually you start looking at that after the battle VIP pass. And yep. Oh, okay, I'm just a Mew deck. Cool. <laughs> we got to play the game the old-fashioned way. Definitely still wants to put down Path. Even though Grant Manley did not get down any Archaeops, you still want to respect the deck as much as possible, right? Yeah, uh, for sure. And we'll see what Grant's able to come up with. Uh, as he's still got plenty of draws left to go. If you can find that Path to the Peak and lock out any potential for your opponent, they very well could be holding on to Professor's Research and uh, probably not an Archaeops as they would have thrown it away with Ultra Ball, but there's... Definitely an opportunity for them to have an okay hand. So do as much as you can to slow them down. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Three Was it Pokemon. triple Mew? A, a double Mew Genesect? I mean, who cares? Yeah. At this point, we're drawing cards. <laughs> that is a lot and of cards point. being drawn. A couple double turbo energy here. We call that, call that a quadruple. <laughs> <laughs> also has a quick ball to thin the hand down. I think at this point, yeah, Genesect V hitting the discard pile. Who needs them? Yeah, I mean, not Grant Hayes at this point. <laughs> that is for sure. This is... Basically how you draw it up if you're going to prize your 1-1 one, one Aerodactyl. And still potential to draw a little more here with the Genesect V. If you find that pat to the peak, you probably feel very comfortable just passing the turnover. You have that double turbo to retreat next turn. Yep. And you're going to get some pretty big knockouts lined up soon. Now, Grant Hayes obviously is looking for the path to the peak. My question here is, if he does not draw it off Fusion Strike System, is it worth extending with the Forest Seal Stone to go for it? Ah, yeah. I... That is actually pretty tough to choose from. I think you can say no, just because you see that your opponent only has three cards in hand and it's still a little unlikely, but he's going to go for it here. And I guess that also just depends on what is in your hand, too. If you have yeah. the supporter to follow up or maybe the vacuum to, remo to remove it, then you'll feel a little more comfortable here. But it always feels rough when you lock in a path and you used your seal stone to do it without the yes. answer in hand. Yeah. And I, I actually... From a quick look at Grant Hayes' hand, I don't think he had a counter stadium or a vacuum, but what he does have is Ultra Ball Double Turbo. So yeah. he can, at minimum, retreat and attack with a MUV Max. And I think he also even has boss's orders in the hand. Well, you don't need much then, and he would have at least an attack into the Lugia V, which is all he's looking for. Grant Manley on the other side. Yeah. Bird Keeper into Lugia V has the Evolution Incense, double Evolution Incense. And three energy cards as well. So Four energy cards. Man, that's, yeah. We can see the Aurora to discard an Archaeops, but, <laughs> and read the, the wind. And, and the and only way to get the hand a little further is to use read the wind, but if you don't evolve, you're probably getting knocked out. Yeah. And honestly, even if you do evolve, you're probably getting knocked <laughs> out here. So this is really a tough spot for Grant Manley. He may be uh, considering just having to go for this read the wind and accepting the fact that he's going to be having to play this game a lot slower, he could go the route of getting the V-Star, like you mentioned. That is an option for him, and it would mean that it's much more difficult for Grant Hayes to get this knockout, and I think that might be what Grant Manley was checking, how many power tablets are down. I think it is just one, though, so he recognizes it's pretty reasonable for my opponent to knock out this Pokemon, even if I use uh, the V-Star at this point. Yeah, if your opponent is going to use a Forest Seal Stone for a Path to the Peak, you know yes. that they at least have a way to attack next turn yeah. lined up. They would not put themselves in that situation willingly. So Grant knows he's going to lose this Lugia V, most likely if he uses Read the Wind, but are three cards worth it? <laughs> I mean, when it's your only option. Grant, uh, so something else he could do is he could manually retreat this Lugia, but 
Yeah, it's not even going to go for that, as he would only have two Pokemon in play, so even an escape rope would get Grant Hayes a KO. Well, not much is needed here. Just the energy to retreat. The Ultra Ball for the Mew VMAX and the Power Tablet will yep. be able to take the knockout here on the Lugia V. And it is totally lined up for Grant Hayes. He could even choose to judge this turn, and I think he will indeed choose to go that route. A great option when your opponent has just added three cards into their hand. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that is a big turn here. Yeah. Path still locked in, so even if Radiant Charizard wanted to get into the mix, it's not going to have a, an opportunity. Yeah. This, is, this is very bad news for Grant Manley. Yeah, Grant is basically playing like three turns behind from this point. And in a format where games typically last <laughs> four, four or five turns, turns yeah. like, <laughs> is definitely not good. So now these players will each get four cards apiece off of the judge. Grant Hayes having everything he needs. And what's nice in this spot as well is he doesn't even have to bump the stadium. So that cuts Grant Manley off of going for something like Illuminion potentially. Well, that is going to be the knockout there. Grant Manley promotes the Radiant Charizard and does have the Lugia V in hand. And a quick ball. So we could see double Lugia V come down. I think if you lose this one, you just lose also. But maybe we'll, that we'll is. Also maybe you true. just have to hold it for Pumpkaboo. Yeah, for sure. That that could be an option. First quick ball is being played though, and it will be the Pumpkaboo grab. Or you can just go Pumpkaboo Luminion Lugia. Okay. All yeah, right. Sure. We got a go we got a turn research here. Sure. But you you don't really get to capitalize on it this turn as you are just gonna have the Lugia down and have to wait for the summoning star obviously. So. But what is weird and awkward about this spot? Grant Manley prized both of his lost vacuum this game. <laughs> and now that Pumpkaboo has come into play, if Grant Hayes can just put another path to the peak down, it's going to stay there until Grant Manley can manually power up a Lugia V-Star. Yeah, that's, that's not really what we're looking for. <laughs> the research can be grabbed and will be immediately played, though it will be seven cards being found. Will we see the high five? No. <laughs> <laughs> not in this spot. Maybe no? <laughs> Yeah, no, Grant's not a Grant Manley's not about it. Oh, he just drew like five energy cards. What is this? Well, when you know you're not gonna use summoning star, you might as well just start attaching. And uh, that is gonna be the case here. V guard energy down. Cramomatic trying to find the boss's orders potentially. Has the escape rope also has Path to the Peak in hand, by the way. Wow. Doesn't want to use it, of course, before using some fusion strike systems, but I think has another Cramomatic as well with this Battle VIP pass. If he could hit a heads here, we could try to see him be aggressive after this Lugia V on the bench with something like a boss. Worst case scenario, you could knock out the Luminion just to take two prizes. That wouldn't be too bad either. Yeah, we might see Grant Hayes slow down a little bit, try to draw into one of those amplifiers first before using the boss's orders, and then he can, of course, make the decision. Can I even target down this Lugia V? The V guard energy is there, so that makes it a little tougher of a knockout. Yeah. It's one less card that you're drawing. Uh, that card is in your hand, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> he put it on top of his deck, but yeah, that is the card he played put in his hand. Played a lot of Rotom phones in his day. So he is going for this Lugia knockout. He's only drawing two cards here. It's, I think, a pretty low odds way to, to get this KO, but if you put that path down, I mean, just even getting a two-hit KO here is pretty strong. Yeah, the way the prize map works, if you just attack into the Salugia, you know your opponent's going to have to eventually use it to start attacking. You'll get the knockout, and it's hard to, to work in the Luminion from that case, and maybe you'll just have that pri those two prizes left over. Path, uh, Palpad coming down now does put back a Judge and a Boss's Orders. This is a card that we see pretty commonly played in this version of Mew VMAX these days. Now without Cross Switcher in the deck. Does have Path to the Peak in hand, like we mentioned. Will put it right down. And I don't know if Grant Manley is aware that his two Lost Vacuums are prized, but he does not have them. They, he, they, he does not have access to them. He didn't care when one was prized, and he threw one away. We'll see if he cares when there's two. Now Evolution Incense can find any Evolution Pokemon. We'll grab another Archaeops just to thin at this point, something we pretty commonly see these players doing, even though obviously this Archaeops doesn't do him any good. He wants to get it out of the deck. It's now a card he's less likely to draw into off of either a supporter or a top deck in future turns. See the capture energy as well, providing a similar effect. The only problem is if you do bench a Pokemon, it gets in the way of a potential Archaeops if that were ever to happen. But I think Grant also understands that Summoning Star is uh, not lined up this game. No. 
Pretty smart as well from Grant Hayes, we got to point out. Went for the Max Miracle as opposed to the Techno Blast. Used Cross Fusion Strike to copy the Max Miracle of the benched Mew VMAX, setting it up so that he doesn't need to play a switching card in order to attack next turn. And it also does hit through the V-Guard energy as well, so it still deals 110 damage. Yeah, and Grant Manley just has to go for a read the wind. And he threw three? three energy cards. Oh. What? That's not what we're here to do. Oh, that's, yeah, that's just tough. This game, I think, is all but over. It's really just in Grant Hayes' court to, to try to close this one out. Grant Manley's probably best chance at this one is to try to sneak out a tie with some boss's orders, stalling action, but... That is pretty unlikely, as even with plus three turns and six minutes left, it's just so likely Grant Hayes is going to find a way to take four prizes. And give it up to Grant Hayes as well. Just every time that his opponent, even with the slimmest of odds, using read the win to build the hand up, immediate judge yes. every single time. You are not going to see more than five cards whenever you start to turn because I can't have you finding the right cards. Honestly, kind of rude from Grant Hayes, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grant, uh, Grant don't Manley. even bother looking at them. <laughs> yeah, Grant Manley finally gets a chance. Okay, I've got a bunch of cards in my hand. Maybe <laughs> I can make something happen. Judge. Yep. Well, Rotom Phone. See if we can get the rest of the cards lined up here. Not really looking for much else. You basically just want to have the double turbo and the boss's orders lined up to take a KO on a V Pokemon next turn. Yeah, when you're in Grant Hayes' spot, obviously everyone can tell that he is in a dominating position of this game, but you have to try to identify ways that you can lose the game and play around that. Try to find ways to, to make sure you can close this one out regardless of what your opponent does. I think correctly identifying that, just trying to make sure the Mew VMAX sticks around. Additional turns, the boss's order is is already in hand, so V Pokemon could be targeted. So Grant Manley has Irida in hand. We might see if he knows <laughs> whether or not the two vacuum are I prized. think he knows. Yeah, it looks like he does. <laughs> Grant, pretty vigilant about the prize checking throughout the course of the game, probably made note of that in one of these more recent searches. Does not have access to the vacuum, cannot use this Lugia. Yeah, just goes for the Marnie. Not even worth playing the Irida if you know Vacuum's not in there. Yep. Do you care? I don't care. Let's just see some cards. <laughs> it's, uh, three more energies. You know, that's been the trend here. Hey, listen, double turbo energy plus the belt on the Pumpkaboo. Go for that Stampede. Deal Ooh. 30 damage. Okay. Giddy up. <laughs> Instead, I think more wisely, we'll choose to put the energy on the Lugia and hope that he can get to an attack. But, I mean, Grant Hayes doesn't even need to worry about going after this Lugia now. He can just knock out this Pumpkaboo and then try to knock out Charizard to win the game. This attack wasn't guaranteed as well. Uh, the Techno Blast was used last turn, so finding the double turbo off of the yeah, Marnie the was last pretty double wild. Turbo, by the way. Yeah, that was uh, pretty big. And we do see the lost vacuum here, so could play that, get rid of the path to the peak, and just go for the win here. At this point, it doesn't really matter if your opponent uses their summoning star V star power. If you just win the game, you don't really care. There's, I mean, it, when you look at the rest of the deck, bosses, orders, escape rope, any of those cards are going to win it for you. Yes. So if you can thin down close enough, it's all but guaranteed. It's always kind of an interesting spot. There's this Mew V that Grant Hayes has chosen to put into the hand. But now that's one less card you draw. Obviously, it gets a card out of the deck. I mean, it's one less card for the Rotom Phone, potentially. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, with the Rotom Phone in hand, make it more likely. And yes, does find, indeed, the boss's orders. <laughs> Grant Manley's decided it's time to just play with the dice. Do -do -do. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping maybe your opponent just has to hit the active. But yeah, Grant Hayes will draw the boss off of this next. Oh, did he actually put the path in? Or the path is still in place. Yeah, he's got the. He's got the vacuum. He's got the right? vacuum. Yeah, he's so just got to order it all right. He's just making sure that everything is all good. Thinking through things. Yeah, even has the replacement stadium. Boom, Genesect draw the boss and win the game. GG's Grant Hayes winning the battle of the Grants. And that's going to be a two to one victory after losing game one, by the way. Grant Hayes held his resolve and found a way to win this set. Yeah, what do you want to name uh, Mr. Manley now? <laughs> what, what, what do we go by? Weekly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll have to talk to him after the match and see how he feels. Yeah, he's not going to be a fan of that yeah. one. Grant Hayes with the win, the smile on his face, moving now to a 5 0 oh,